Hello everyone, it's Helder here. Today I wanted to go over the M9 bayonet. Alright, this is the actual uh, military issue one. It's uh, made in the USA uh, by a company called Ontario. It is made of 420 modified steel. It's a 7 inch blade. Alright, so the actual blade part. And it weighs about a pound. Okay, so the serious, uh, serious consistency. Alright, it feels like you have a serious tool in your hand uh, when you are holding uh, this M9 bayonet. Uh, those of us that have been in the military are very familiar with bayonets, still very practical today, uh, especially in the Marine Corps. And uh, it's uh, it's real deal. And uh, as a matter of fact, uh, we went ahead and put it up against the coconut. And uh, here's a little uh, field experiment with the M9 bayonet versus a coconut. Wow. Well. You guys could tell that was a pretty good slash. Got a good whack in there, but still didn't crack it. So, let's give it the reverse and give it an angle too, see what we get with here. Oof, all right, so. <sighs> Sorry, hydration break. So we did get a little crack in there, so I guess uh, pretty much we're gonna finish it off. So if you guys think about it, what, a couple whacks, and we got right through. And don't forget, there's nothing really holding us down, so. If this was connected, let's say, to a human body, we'd have a lot more resistance and uh, I think the damage would be greater. So we'll go ahead, once again, I'll go with another backhand and uh, most likely this probably will finish it off. Nope, oh, nope, just another crack. Tougher than we thought, huh? And uh, give it an angle one. And that uh, pretty much finished it off. All right, so that coconut was a heck of a lot tougher than we thought it would be, but uh, at the same time, I certainly wouldn't want to uh, be hitting the skull because uh, I felt the type of force that I was applying. And, uh, you know, once again, not something that uh, would bode very well for the skull. Uh, for the, uh, skull. Uh, we also, it also comes with an a excellent, uh, well-built uh, scabbard and a holster uh, for it, all right, with a quick release on it, belt attachment, all right, everything's just made of super, super quality. You know, once again, it's uh, military specs, so uh, they didn't skimp on anything, uh, including the price, but that's another uh, story. <clears throat> once again here, also has a uh, wire cutter. All right, so uh, plenty of videos where you could see it actually in use, but the wire would obviously go right here, and you would go ahead and just apply force and be able to cut that wire. Uh, I've used it on barbed wire, um, different types of wire that we would see out in the field or even just uh, playing around with it at home just to test it. And uh, it works. Uh, apply some force and it's good to go. Also comes with a little uh, straight edge or a flathead screwdriver tip here. All right, so that could come in, uh, in handy in a pinch. All right, and I also wanted to uh, show you a little bit of application with it. Uh, came across the, uh, uh, a dead tree uh, in the field. All right, and that's uh, something that's actually very common. But uh, everything was very dry out there, and uh, we needed some firewood anyway, so I figured what a great excuse to uh, pull out the, uh, the M9 bayonet, uh, bayonet and uh, get some live training in. And uh, once again, let me show you a little bit of that. fun playing remembering your angles thinking of the distance that you guys have here right we have all sorts of snow remember your checking hand okay this is no joke and just play get a feel for what your weapon could really do all right so it's a little bit of playing a little bit of uh wood to play with got the doggies around don't want to go too crazy so the m9 bayonet is uh made uh to be affixed on the AR-15, M4, M16s. And here I have it on my uh, Mossberg 590 uh, tactical shotgun. So that's where I want it set up for. Once again, it's all about getting the uh, correct lugs so that you can go ahead and uh, mount it onto your weapon of choice. And once again, of course, I have it staged on a couple kettlebells, so I have a bunch of my favorite toys all in one place. So when it comes to uh, owning gear, even reviewing gear, 
uh, I like to uh, get my hands on stuff that are that's going to handle uh, many tasks. So you have something like this. It's going to take up a pound. All right, it doesn't seem like much, but you add it to the rest of your bug out gear or your pack um, or even on your person, and it's going to weigh down on you. You know, depending on the other gear that you're also carrying. So when you're making this kind of decision to add an extra pound just for a blade, you want to make sure that it's uh, you can multitask with it. All right, so not only is it a great um, weapon for your firearm, but as you saw, it's a great tool for out in the field. Uh, excellent for self-defense. It's not going to let you down. All right, we've used these as uh, tent pegs and shelter for shelter building and keeping them in the ground, even in sand and in desert situations. And they worked for us because it's just a serious uh, engineered piece of metal. All right, you're going to pay extra for it, but once again, this is one of those you get what you pay for. So going back to this is a uh, once again, you got multi-use. All right, so that's what we're looking for when we're trying to choose our gear. You want quality, something that's not going to let you down when you need it. All right, when I'm out there with our Natural Training Center members and uh, testing this stuff, these are the things that, uh, that are always going through my mind. Like, would I really put this in my pack and carry it with me? I mean, does it have enough use uh, to justify its weight? Or would I be better off with other stuff, right? So those are the questions you need to ask yourself. What might be good for me uh, might not be good for you. It depends exactly on what your mission is what your other gear is, what your physical conditioning is. Uh, once again, I wouldn't go out there and start doing all of the stuff that we're doing on video without practicing um, certain uh, uh, combative and, and, and uh, knife and blade applications. All right, be smart. Uh, it's all about the training. Uh, we've used ridiculous amounts of uh, plastic blades and stainless steel blades forever before we even worry about training with live blades. All right, so I just wanted to throw that little disclaimer in there because sometimes you just see a lot of stupidity, you know, on YouTube, and I certainly don't want to be, be the one that's uh, going to be blamed for that. All right, so <clears throat> once again, closing out this review, um, excellent product, all right, excellent blade. I should call it just a multi-use tool, uh, you know, something even used, <laughs> which of course you're not supposed to, but, you know, once again, driving in stakes into the ground, uh, tent pegs, uh, anything where you would need some blunt force. I mean, this thing's just built really well. Uh, you know, once again, we're talking about emergency situations, not a place where, whoa, why don't you just pull out the hammer? Or, well, I don't have a hammer. I'm out in the field, you know, and I chose to put this in my pack, you know, as opposed to something else that, uh, that weighs uh, a pound. So, uh, you know, it sounds good sometimes, you know, when you're in the realistic uh, application, you know, things change, all right? So you got to keep that in mind and address these things now not when you're out in the field because then you're going to have that many uh, less choices all right and then you throw in the elements and hunger and everything else and uh you know you wonder why there's so many disasters in uh, survival type situations all right so prepare prepare now that's why we're doing these reviews to share information together uh so that we could uh get and uh, stay prepared once again this is helder i am out